Hey guys, what's up? This is Dan here with Grapevine Recording and welcome back to Quick Tips. In this video, we are going to be looking at a different idea on a on a concept that we have covered and that is to try and make your drums sound a little bit more exciting than perhaps they actually were when you recorded them. Um, we are using a different session today and what we're, what we're looking at doing is we're going to be looking at room mic compression. So... If you listen to the drums, this is just towards the end. Right, so we've got just a very typical drum track. Um, there isn't that much processing done to them as um, you know at this point. But what we're going to look at doing is using the room mic to create a little bit more excitement and a little bit more depth into the, into the sound of the drums. So this is the room mic on its own. And there's a couple of things that I've done now and then there's something else that I'm going to do at the end. So first of all, I've created just an EQ, well a filter, just filtering off quite um, gently everything below 250. That's just going to that's just going to remove some of that very bottom end of the uh, kick drum that I don't want to affect the compressor. Uh, after that, as I say, I've got the 1176 compressor, which is doing very heavy compression. So if you want to listen to that. So that's taking about 5 dB at... Uh, a 12 to 1 ratio, very fast attack, very fast release, that's how you can hear that pumping element. Uh, and then after that, I have got an EQ, which is just cutting out about 1.1k, and then cutting out just a little bit at 10k as well, which sounds like this. Right, so now in the entire mix, that sounds like this. So can you hear when I start bringing the fader up just how the um, the sustain or the decay of all the the drum parts kind of get elongated a little bit? And this is something that's been done for years, you know. Um, you know, compression room mics is something that's probably been going for around maybe 30 or 40 years now. And But this is the way that I, I like to take it a step further. And this is for, say, for example, if the the place where you recorded wasn't the best sound and place on earth so what you do is you get a reverb i'm going to use the um impulse response reverb from waves uh, we'll do it in a just in mono for now obviously best if you do this in stereo what we're going to do is take a studio sound use the impulse response of that that'll sound like this So it just adds that short reverb, but a nice reverb of whatever studio this was recorded in. Um, and then what we do is we do the same thing to it. We then compress that sound. And without... So, obviously, after that, the, I'm not going to put the EQ in because it'd have to change depending on what the uh, the reverb or the sound of that studio space sounded like. But uh, that's a very, very quick way to perhaps, you know, as a way of thinking of maybe if the place where you recorded your drum sound wasn't actually that good, you know, why not put a nice reverb before the compressor and then compress that reverb? Obviously, in this case, you want to use the compre uh, the reverb as an insert, not as a send. But, you know, that's something to get your head around. Have a go with that. See what you think. This has been Dan with Grapevine Recording. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.